When I got the Proxima PX1695 in for review, I thought it would be pretty much a slam dunk. After all, I liked the look and the style, the aesthetic of the watch. It suited me down to the ground simply because it was a vintage style watch, an homage to an old Seiko. So you would have thought that would have been a slam dunk. Well, that's not been the case. There have been a couple of issues, and not self-inflicted issues by Proxima. But there are silver linings. So what's going on, and what do I think about this watch? Let's find out. Hi there and welcome back to John's Watch Joint. If you've been here before, you know I love vintage and vintage style watches. Not just homage watches, I like all styles, but my preference is for vintage. And of course, I've had things like uh, this watch on the channel before, a 1981 Quartz Vintage Pulsar Diver. Love this kind of watch, so it's very redolent of the PX1695, that's for sure. Also, I've got this little Seiko 5 here. Looks almost like a, an homage to an Omega Constellation C case, but it's a Seiko 5 6119 703 from 1976. Love the year, that's why I got the watch. Great year in Scotland, hot summer, best summer ever. And also I've got here my Seiko Lord Matic. This is a 5606-8010 from 1970. And you can see there's a theme running with these. That vintage vibe, that vintage style. And that means that the PX1695 is going to be something that's right up my street, right? Not quite. So where did it go wrong? Well, let's just move these out to the side here and just show you the box that the watch came in. And as you can see here, yeah, the case was pretty much destroyed. And unfortunately, the watch wasn't a gore when it arrived either. It was going, but it was very sickly and I had to get the movement seen to. Fortunately, it's okay now, but in the meantime... Proxima official store are sending me out a replacement watch. So that's really good of them. So thanks guys for doing that. It's on its way. Not only that, it's coming with a different logo on it. The unicorn is now going to be off it. It's just going to say Proxima on it as well. So I'm looking forward to receiving that. But how is the watch and how does it go? Do I like it or not? All right, so let's get into it. I'm not going to the box anymore. How the box got to be so destroyed, I have no idea, but... If Roy Mail are listening, if you want a pay rise, you're going the wrong way about it, guys. Anyway, that aside, inside the box you get this little pouch here with the watch inside it. Normally it would have this strap on it because that's what it comes with. But I'm not keeping it on that strap because it is absolutely ghastly. It's just one of the worst straps I've ever seen and very disappointing. So that's one of the big negatives for the watch. However, you do get your two-year guarantee card from Proxima. has the QR code on it the date when you purchased it, and it's signed by the guy who's actually shipping it. And you also get your little booklet in there, which is in Chinese and other various languages, telling you how to operate the movement. So, this is the little pouch, and inside it you do get the watch. And let's just pull the watch out of there, and you'll see what I've done here. As I've just banged the camera, I've put it on the bracelet. This bracelet comes from this watch, which is the little Pulsar from 1981, and you can see the obvious cues and references there from that era. And it fits this absolutely perfectly. So you can see there it's a 20mm and it's got a little flare out. And it suits the topography of this watch absolutely perfectly. Look at that. Proxima, if you're watching, I've just solved this problem for you. This is easily resolvable. That's how the watch should come. That's exactly how the watch should come. So let's get into what are we actually looking at here. The watch itself is a PX1695 from Proxima. Proxima official store, that's where I got it from. Now, inside the face here, you've got a very unusual pattern, which I'll go over later on, but just something to have a good think about until I get to that. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But let's get into some of the specs and dimensions. So first of all, we have a 38mm diameter case. The lug to lug is a straightforward 46 millimeters. The lug width is 20 millimeters, and the thickness is only 11.8 millimeters, which is pretty good with that Seiko NH36 movement inside because it's got the day and it's got the date. We have a mixture of polished and brushed finishing on the watch. As I said, it comes normally on a leather strap, which has got a very very small taper on it normally. But this one is what you want for this watch. If you can find one of these, you can find these for anywhere from £5 to £20 on eBay. You'll find them anywhere. Just look up Vintage Pulsar, Vintage Loris or Vintage Seiko Watch Strap, 20mm. You'll find them all over the place. 
really common as muck. Just get one, it's got plenty of link sizes on it. So there you go. The weight of the watch with the supplied leather is 76 grams, but even with this bracelet is only 99 grams. So it's not a heavy watch, it's not a big watch. Water resistance on this watch is 200 meters, that's its claimed water resistance. The watch also has BG W9 Super Luminova on the indices and the hands. It's really nicely done. I'll show you that in the cupboard of doom later on. We have a sapphire crystal and you can see there it's got blue AR coating on it and it's not strong. It's just the perfect balance. I really like that. It's not like the early AliExpress watches. This is just beautiful to see outside. I've got some outside shots that I'll show you later on as well. So those are the basic specs of the watch. So let's have a little look at this guy on the wrist. And here we go. I'm giving you the long wrist shot here. It's slightly looser because I've taken off the other watch. But as you can see there, because it's a short lug-to-lug -lug watch, fits my wrist very well. A little bit flat across the top of the wrist, so I would say that it's 6.75 inches. I'm getting away with it just. Any smaller than that, it might look a little funky, but for me, it works just fine. Wears extremely well, as you would expect, at that diameter on my wrist size. That bracelet style befits the watch. That's what they should be doing. And as you can see there, if you've got a really small wrist, because it's very straight across the top there, you're going to have gapping in there. And it's even worse with that leather strap. And that's why I took it off straight away. And you can see that up close. It's very legible. Let's show you some outside shots. All right then, so you can see from the outside shots, this is a stunning watch, and it's the kind of watch you'd really like to have in your collection if you do like anything that's down the line of vintage. doesn't matter whether it's a Seiko Superior homage or not. It's just something that looks really cool just now. It's really in vogue, and you can wear it in a wide variety of straps. Plenty of good leather straps out there that are thicker, that'll suit the shape of the watch. Especially things like Milanese too, they'd work equally effectively. But let's have a closer look at this face because that's the start of the show and I'll go over the finishing as well. Alright, so we all know that the watch looks really nice. We've seen it on the wrist. It wears very well and it's really up to date with that retro vintage look. Now the elephant in the room is obviously this strap. This has to go. I'm not putting this on anything else. This is going straight in the bin. It's absolute garbage. I don't know what they were thinking. So Proxima, sort that one out. Get something more appropriate on the watch. I think that's the way you have to go. So that's duly put into the bin. So let's have a look at the watch close up. Let's bang the camera and get close in here. I'm really good at that these days. And as you can see, we've got a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces here. And looking at the side profile of the watch, you'll see there's no turn down to the lugs whatsoever. And that's kind of disappointing because even if you take that vintage pulsar that I had there, at least they make an effort. And that's a very short lug to lug. With this one, it's a bit longer. And if they just put a little turn on it, that gapping you've seen at the sides wouldn't be so prevalent. So maybe something uh, that could be looked at as well, because you don't always want to homage everything on a watch. You want to make it a bit of your own as well. So maybe something to look at. However, the quality of the polishing down the flanks here and the underside is absolutely excellent. The only problem, of course, is that when you have superior high polish like that, it's always going to pick up any smudges. So when you turn around and go over to the top of the watch here, you can see here you've got two shelves, and you can see there both those shelves have got a beautiful linear brush to them and a luster. I believe Sam Martin did a version of this as well, where they actually have that high polish. There's a certain word for it, I can't remember, it defeats me just now. But uh, they did a really high polish to that on the side there. Uh, this one is uh, remaining brushed as it is on the top as well. So everything's a linear brush on top. And the star of the show has to be that face. Look at the finishing on that face. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, in the description it says it's face deep press grid pattern. I don't think that does it justice. It's just 
awesomely put together. It's like a minuscule chain link that's dropping down in rivulets from top to bottom. It is just gorgeous to look at. You can see that framed date window is done extremely well. It's done to a very high standard. Now, the thing to note here is that if you look at all the indices, so if you look at the minute track and then you look at the five minute indices, the stepped indices there, these are all applied. It's not printed there. Everything is applied on the screen. Now, that takes some know-how and some skill, and to do it to such a high standard and to such effect proves that this watch is from a factory that has got some really good production standards. Now, look at the centre of the watch there. See the pinion? It's capped. That's just that little extra touch there. You've got the black hands with room for loom in there, and you can see that the indices at every five minutes, they're stepped. That second hand sweeps right across the top, almost right out to that edge. And you'll see there that the hour and minute hands, they're pretty much the same. The hour hand is quite short simply because the uh, minute hand is shorter as well because it has to go over those grooves, those cutouts. And of course you've got that logo as it is just now, which is Proxima, and you have that angry looking unicorn at the top there. To me, that looks like a, a car dealership logo. I just wish they could divorce themselves from that and just call it Proxima because when it comes to naming, it's not the most offensive when it comes to Chinese watch uh, manufacturing names. So I would say it's, it's pretty good. And if you look there also at the steps on the five minute markers on the upper, you've got the BGW9 Superluminova and you'll see in the cupboard of doom just how well they perform. Let's have a look at that now. Welcome to the Cupboard of Doom and this is the Proxima 1695 and I'll tell you what, this is a pleasant surprise. Look at the BGW9 here. There's not much been applied, but it's razor sharp in appearance. It's a really good close-up view. Yeah, and looking at it closely, you can see that the indices and the raised parts of the indices, they glow a lot brighter. And you can hear those noises, but that's actually my wife walking up the stairs. I thought it was going to get spooked there. Um, yeah, so you can see that, uh, yeah, around the indices, around the periphery of the watch, that BGW9 is doing a superb job. Second hand is not loomed at all. Um, but you can see there, we're just about four o'clock on the time here. And the hour hand and the minute hand are not as bright, which is a bit disappointing. However, I'm not surprised simply because there's not much room or not sufficient area to put a large amount of lumen in this watch. So I think it's punching well above its weight. It's razor sharp. It does last for a couple of hours in the night, but this is predominantly a kind of semi-dress piece. So I would give this a good 7 out of 10. Yeah, well done Proxima. Back to the studio. So we're back from the cupboard of doom, and that was a lot better than I expected. Very pin-sharp, precise lumen over there. Not a lot of room or area for Loom to be on this watch, but they've done it to aplomb. You've got to applaud them for that, so they've done extremely well. I am just absolutely bowled over by the quality on this face. I think Proxima have really got it in spades here. They could really take San Martin on if they really wanted to. I think they could take them on if they could just get a good catalogue. Uh, they're way better than Pagani Design, that's for sure, when it comes to quality. But yeah, what a treat to see that face. Let's get in as close as I can. Look at that. And that AR coating, doing its job there. No washout whatsoever. And the bezel, highly polished, completing the look of the watch. And you've got a polished outer to that crown. The crown is just the perfect size. And the NH36A is just a dream to use. Turning it over, see the case back. And as you can see there, very simple, very plain. I don't mind that. If you've got to cut costs, that's the obvious place to do it. I've got no issues with that whatsoever. It's done to a very high standard. And it's just a lovely, beautiful looking grain. Very simple. So we're already at that time. What are my final thoughts for this watch? Well, having a look at the array of watches here, it's not dissimilar at all, but it does stand out. Even against that Seiko Lormatic, it still stands out. This was a beautiful watch in its day, and this homage has captured that absolutely beautifully. The only thing they haven't captured is the fact that it had to have a really good bracelet. If they got that done, then this would have been an absolute slam dunk. 
You can see it here, it fits really well. Everything with the watch is done to high standard. The polishing, the chamfering, the finishing, the brushing and the polishing, excellent. The choice of crystal and the amount of blue AR on it is perfect. The face of the watch, i.e. the dial, the finishing on that is sublime. It really is well done. Um, the application of the markers and the logos, everything is done to a very high standard. The capping of that second hand at the pinion, oh, it, it's just to die for. The step on the five minute markers and the length of the hands to suit. I, I'm, I'm really gobsmacked. I really think this is stunning. As I said, the only thing that lets it down is the choice of strap. If you can live with buying a watch head, then absolutely go for it. If you don't think you can suffer it on any of these straps, then it's not for you. So that's up for you to decide. Uh, as I say, I went for a, a very simple option here to achieve the look. It cheapens the watch, but at the same time, you know what I'm getting at. That's the look they were going for. That's the look they should have went for. So Proxima, hopefully... You're going to listen to that. So anyway, if you really enjoyed this content, please like, please subscribe. This is John from John's Watch Joint. Thank you very much for being here. I'll catch you again on the next one. Ta-ra for now.